Thank you for watching tonight. 61 years ago in Jerusalem, weather patterns emerged and they got 24 inches of snow. Seven years ago in December of 2013, it snowed half that amount, 12 inches of snow. But that same day, the weather front went just a few miles south of Jerusalem and between Jerusalem and Hebron, they got three and a half foot of snow. That's 42 inches. So, the people who lived in biblical times, they knew snow. They had seen snow. And they wrote about them and they spoke about them. And a number of these things are recorded in the Bible. According to uh, Cruden's Concordance, there are 25 references to snow in the King James Bible. But only a handful refer to literal cases of snow. But let me just mention a couple of them. In 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 20, we learn about one of David's bodyguards, a man who was renowned for his bravery as well as his skill. His name was Benaiah. In fact, he was such a skilled man and he was the leader of men that David made him chief or captain of his group of bodyguards. Now these men functioned in David's day pretty much the way that the Secret Service functioned today in protecting a number of our elected officials. And if you'll read in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 20, Benaiah killed two lion-like men of Moab. Now, there are other versions that translate uh, lion-like as with the word Ariel. And Ariel literally means lions. So two lions of Moab. But we think the context is probably referring to warriors. Moabite warriors who were kind of like Navy SEALs or the Green Beret or the Army Rangers. Uh, these were very skilled men. They were powerful men and uh, they were renowned for their bravery. And so Benaiah killed two lions of Moab. And while the writer was thinking about lions, he thought about a literal case of lions because the second part of that verse says that on a snowy day, Benaiah went down into a pit and he actually killed a lion. There's another passage in Job chapter 9, verse 30, where Job washed himself with snow water in order to make himself clean. But he realized that washing his external body with snow water wasn't like having your soul washed away from your sins. We know that uh, snow feeds the rivers in the uh, Middle East, even in the summertime. When there is uh, summertime heat and there's glacial meltwater, uh, even for the summer it feeds uh, rivers like the, uh, the Jordan River. Snow was also used to compare the brilliance and the glory and the majesty of the members of the Godhead. In Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9, Daniel foresees into the future where our Lord, the, called the Son of Man in the book of Daniel, He appears before the ancient of days. That's God the Father. And there are millions of angels who appear with the Son of Man as He Himself appears before the Ancient of Days. And in this vision, Daniel saw that the Son of Man had clothing that was, uh, was white as snow. Later we learn in the New Testament that when Jesus was transfigured, according to Mark Chapter 9, verse 3 in the King James Bible, Jesus' clothing was as white as snow. Now Matthew says His uh, clothing was as white as light. And there's another phrase in Mark that Jesus' clothing was so white and so bright that no laundryman could bleach it any whiter. And so the comparison of the radiance of Jesus' glory is compared to snow. Several years later, 60 years later, the Apostle John sees a vision while he is on the island of Patmos. He's there because he's a Christian. He's a leader of the, of the uh, Christian movement. And he's been exiled there as uh, one of the enemies of Rome. And so John hears a voice behind him. The voice is as loud as a trumpet. And when he turns, he faints. It's Jesus. Jesus awakens him. And then John says in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14, he observes that the head and the hair of Jesus was as white as snow. 
So we have literal snow. We have the comparison of uh, the gradients and the glory and the majesty of God being compared to snow. But then there's a metaphorical comparison um, in, the, in the Bible that God's grace is like snow. After David committed murder and adultery and he was away from God for about a year, he's confronted by Nathan the prophet. And David is absolutely crushed with guilt. And so he composes Psalm 51 that expresses his guilt and the penit penitent attitude that David had toward God because of his own sins. And David is desperate for a clean conscience. And in Psalm 51 and verse 7, David says, Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. This is not a demand. He's asking God to forgive him and to make him clean and to restore unto him the joy of his salvation. And God, please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Several years later, Isaiah the prophet would plead with the rebellious leaders and the rebellious people of, uh, of Judah. He would plead for them to repent. And God through the prophet says, though your sins be as scarlet, though they be obvious as the color red, they shall be as white as snow. God asked them, come to me and let's reason together. Even though your sins may be as red as scarlet, I can make them as white as snow. We can all be clean in God's sight. But forgiveness is always costly. If you back into someone's car and you damage his vehicle and he tells you later, I'm going to forgive you. I'm not turning it in on my insurance. That's costly to him. If he decides to do a little touch-up paint or if he decides to go ahead and have the body shop fix that up and he pays for it himself, his forgiveness to you cost him. Well, for God to be able to forgive us was also costly. And it cost him the life, the blood of his very own son. So in the next few days, when you look out and you see the weather and what God has done, and whether we have uh, a big nothing, whether we have uh, layers of ice, whether we have uh, several inches of snow, I want you to think about the glory of God, the beauty of God, that He can command these things to happen, and they do. Psalm 148, verse 8, the rain and the storms and the snows fulfill the Word of God. And so as you think about your relationship with God, God can make you as white as snow. And so you be like David. Be desperate for a clean conscience, but understand that forgiveness is costly to God. It may be free to us, but it costs God the blood of His only Son. That's something to appreciate. That's something that when we in inscribe that on our hearts, that transforms us into the image of Jesus our Lord. Let's bow for prayer. Father, we thank You for all the weather that You send. You don't send bad weather. You send weather that we need at the right time. Thank You for always thinking of us. Thank You for the redemption that we have in Your Son. Like David, Father, we ask You to make our souls as white as snow in Your eyes. Thank You, Father, for Your forgiveness. It is through the name of Jesus we ask. Amen.